Hi, how are you? This is the next episode of the Thought Project. Um, I had thought last night it would be the very end of March. It would be like my final episode for the month, but I decided to put another one together um, before the month actually ends. And I can't imagine that would be a problem for anybody because nobody seems to really have a problem with me singing another song or sharing some more thoughts. Um, the response to the videos has actually been really good as far as feedback, and I can see that the following is actually growing, so that's really good. And as I noted in the last um, episode, and I think also on Facebook for people who follow me there, um, people are actually friends, not followers from Facebook, sorry. But so many, you know, for my friends, I've noted basically that um, I'm not out like hitting conventions or the DC circuit anymore to promote projects. I'm actually just growing it through my social media because I have the rest of my life to work on it and take care of. Um, as far as Charlottesville goes, I have a feeling I'm probably not going to be staying in Charlottesville. I've been here for a couple of years, and it seems like it's time to move on. So I'm looking at opportunities outside the area. Um, obviously, I went and back and got my associate's degree in medical studies and plan to stay somewhere in that field, or at least to use, you know, my more practical degree and knowledge for my next career steps choices. But, you know, life is weird. I have, like, three different degrees, and uh, the first two were in really impractical things that I don't think anyone should get a degree in, frankly. Um, that's a long story. You can go into it in another little show because the day is going to be less than 15 minutes. So here's the thing. Um, in the last episode, I referenced some issues with the Russian mafia in the U.S. And I've been trying to pull that front through for people, especially with the relevance to the war in Ukraine and Russia and, you know, put into other issues because I do have a background in journalism. I did work as a journalist, just so you know. Um, I actually got paid to write in journalism. And frankly, I was been writing politics and political issues is when I actually started getting paid because when I wrote for Hollywood in the entertainment industry and was actually put through a long extortion scheme, I couldn't get paid at all. So when I switched to financial issues then and jumped from into that from politics is when I really started making some money. But I still found that film journalism was a pretty tough one to make a steady paycheck out of. So I ended up actually leaving really doing all together. At this point the thought project is basically just a continuation of, you know, a vocation essentially and information gathered during long investigations in the DC area. I want to refer you back to an older paper it's from 2001, so it's not new. Um, and it was a paper put out under John Ashcroft called The Rise of Organized Crime. And it actually discussed the Russian mafia and their habits and behaviors. Now, one of the earlier threads that I pulled through in earlier episodes was on the fact that the Russian government, um, or the Russian mafia in the U.S. actually has a fair amount of control of Hollywood, which is where you get some of the really bad projects out of Hollywood, you know. The women who are apparently actually prostitutes that are lip syncing, the bad dancing, the movies that don't make any sense, the weird setups, the propaganda, right? Um, and people who want to run away from it all these days by claiming that everything is just turned into populism that are probably fairly Russian assets themselves. I know this because they went through the whole process of learning about it all when I was in the Syria for 19 years. So what I'm going to pull back around to with this is if you're wondering why they started pulling into Hollywood so much more. Like, Marilyn Monroe wasn't actually remembered that fondly after her death. She's somebody who's actually been remembered more fondly in more recent decades and feted by Hollywood. And the reason for that actually is because she was a KGB operative. A lot of people don't know that. She was. She actually wasn't this hugely neurotic, weird woman. She was actually, and she wasn't really somebody who was fighting her right. She was actually somebody who just worked for the KGB. She was really difficult on sets and really hard to be around because she was KGB. And she lived her whole life on a sick system from Russia. And eventually she died. That's pretty much it. And if you have to wonder why a woman like that would have died, you probably should be wondering to watch the show. Because the answer to that is pretty simple. And I'm just saying all that because the lives of those people tend to be really dysfunctional and just most people don't really want to live that kind of lifestyle. So what happened though is the Soviet Union collapsed in the 80s, right? At that time, a lot of people who had been Russian Mafia were associated with the KGB, and they were allowed to work for the Russian government, or they worked in the U.S. to their KGB, whatever. There was a cover for all. And as the Soviet Union collapsed, you can see this in the paper if you go back and read it. It's online. The Department of Justice, you just Department of Justice, it's free and open, you can read it anytime you want. But the thing is, it talks about how all these mobsters had to struggle to find legal, valid businesses, which they were then using to run drugs, prostitution, um, the Russian mafia has a very militaristic lifestyle and um, oftentimes tries to keep people slaves. They do in the U.S. And the thing about that is that out in Hollywood, you're going to see that there's a number of organizations and you start to examine them too closely, you'll see like, oh, it kind of looks like another Russian mafia-run group that probably was established like 
right around the end of the Soviet Union. Oh, all the founding partners suddenly started getting this field around the end of the Soviet Union. Funny thing. Hmm. And all their projects are kind of weird and propaganda -y. And they have these singers that are lip singers. And the dancing's terrible. And now it comes like Russian dancing girls. And the movies are all bad. And everything's stolen. And nobody who actually worked on it gets paid. And all the people who actually worked on it were working out for extortion schemes. Funny thing, right? Not a funny thing. It sucks. And it's a big part of why the U.S. public, and frankly a lot of you in the world, have just moved on from the U.S. entertainment industry. Now, there's not such a big deal about that because as... The world has changed to move on. Frankly, I would say that those businesses have not really progressed with the times have changed with technology and people. Thank God the rest of us have better things to do because as a reference to a book called Long in the Tale a long time ago, it's a couple of us back, but it talked about the proliferation and rise of new media streaming avenues and options. So the idea of these large hegemonious organizations that may or may not be very decent providing material and all of us being stuck with the exact same media having to consume, if you even have time to consume it, um, stop being an issue. And it's become even more so. Today, you know, we have a huge variety of media and options to pursue and people who do their own artistic project, all that's out of Hollywood and all over the world. And that's the end of that, basically. Um, you know, you can watch it if you want, but you know, I don't think hardly anybody watched the Oscars this year. I don't expect really to be an Oscars the next couple of years. It's probably just go away all together. Probably just fine. And as far as your shows, I have no idea. I have no idea if they'll even be on Hollywood in 10 years, frankly. And I don't think anyone cares. Not the way things are today. Just so you know. Just so you know. Mm -mm. So I'm going to go ahead and sing a song. Um. By the way, one last point. I think it might be kind of interesting to see where some of the people go because I think you're going to find a lot of them as these businesses fall apart or be running back to Russia and China. So watch that. Just a little tip. Now, I'm going to sing Never by Heart. Um, it's a wonderful song from the 80s. I love Heart. I thought they were an excellent band. For people who don't know them, um, they're a heavy metal pop band. They're run by two women. They have one female lead singer and a guitarist. And everybody just loved them. Um, they were the first women to make it really big and sing rock and, you know, perform in a way that men had usually performed. So I just, I think they're great. Um, and I just don't think they'll ever be another heart. There'll never be another performer like them. But anyways, so here we go. Hey, baby, I'm talking to you. Stop yourself and listen. Some things you can never choose, even if you try, yeah. You're banging your head again Cause somebody won't let you win One chance, one love Your chance to let me know We can't go on Just running away If we stay any longer We will surely never get away Whoa, whoa, anything you want We can make it happen Stand up and turn around Never let them shoot us down. Never, 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 never run away. Hey, baby, you know it's true. Why you bother lying? When you know that you wanted to, don't you dare deny me. Now walk those legs right over here. Give me what I'm dying for. One chance, one love. Hold me down and then let me go. We can't go on just running away. If we wait any longer, we will surely never get away. Whoa, whoa, anything you want, we can make it happen. Stand up and turn around. Never let them shoot us down. Never, oh, never. Never run away. Hey, baby, I'm talking to you. Stop yourself and listen. Some things you can never, never choose, even if you try. Yeah, you're banging your head again because somebody won't let you in. One chance, one love, your chance to let me know. We can't go on just running away. If we stay any longer, we will surely never get away. 
Whoa, whoa, never wait. Whoa, whoa, never. I messed that part up. Who cares? Never. We can't go on. Never. We can't go on. Never. Never. Never run away. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the performance of that song. I can't even remember if I written it or sang it or performed it, but I'm just kidding. I. I may have actually even already performed that song for you all, but I felt like it really kind of went much better with this episode. So, um, and I'm not sure if I even care if this is perfect because I'm not a perfect person. And I just really like making my little shows, my little thought project, and I like being real. So that's what I'm going to do. I keep doing that. Have a good day.